Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Today, it's gonna to be another enclosure, but I promise you this is not a ordinary enclosure like you've seen before. Uh, this one is an Otor, Ortor, however you say it. Here in Alabama, we're just gonna call it Ortor. Uh, this is a cloth enclosure, but it's kind of off the beaten path from what you would normally see in enclosures. Uh, has a bit of a different appearance. Uh, you biker guys are probably gonna like it because it, it has that, that leathery, appearance to it but it also has some technological upgrades that a lot of the other machines don't have and this enclosure comes with a light and a fan that can actually be controlled using the one of the Otour like the, I'm using the laser master 3 for this demonstration and the light and the fan are actually controlled using the micro buttons in light burn so you can turn the light on or off you can turn the fan on or off from light burn without having to walk over to your workspace which is pretty cool. Uh. Alright guys, so here's the enclosure. Uh, like I said, it, it almost has a motorcycle-ish appearance to it, which is cool. Uh, it doesn't look like most uh, enclosures that you're going to run across. It does have the big Ortour logo on the front. It is that cloth material, but this one's like two layers. It's a little thicker than your normal uh, enclosures. And it actually, believe it or not, helps with the sound of the laser as well. I know some of you guys complain that some of these machines are loud. And this LM3 is rocking the Comgro 20 watt uh, module. So it's kind of loud. And I'm gonna turn the module on so you can hear it. And I don't know if you can, you should be able to pick that up in my mic. It's pretty loud. But when you close the enclosure, it actually does tame that, that sound down. So that's one thing that I will say about this enclosure is not only does it contain the light and the smoke, but it actually does a pretty good job on the sound. That's typically like why I like my wood enclosures is because they do kind of muffle the sound of these, you know, fans and stuff running. And I've got the exhaust fan turned on over here in Lightburn. Uh, what I will do, I need to get the screen over here in just a second to where I can kind of walk you through and show you how that, uh, how that works. So anyway, on the inside, I'm going to just open it up and kind of walk you through the, the little features that about it. It does have the window, but the window has a covering that you can zip up. Uh, one thing that I, I kind of wish they'd included was either a snap button here that you could snap it back to the back so it wouldn't be flopping around or maybe some Velcro that would have been kind of nice. Uh, that would have been a nice addition, something that would just hold this back and uh, keep it out of the way. So if you're watching our tour, maybe in the future, you know, maybe, maybe put us a button on the back of this that we could, you know, or some Velcro or something. That might be nice. The one thing that I will say about this uh, enclosure, unlike a lot of the other ones, the, the way it's put together, it uses these real, real small, like aluminum rods. It's, it's a frame. It basically is just a box. Pieces are shaped like rectangles. You slide them in there, uh, kind of like a tent or some other type of material. It's got these snaps with the straps. You snap everything together uh, and that frame adds rigidity to it and it keeps it standing up. You can see that on the side, of it, it actually does have like some little holes for, you know, markers and scissors and clippers and, you know, other materials that you may want to use. Uh, paint pens, if you use paint pens with your engraving, uh, you can put all that on the side over there. Got kind of a little bit of storage there. Uh, the light bar, as you can see, is pretty bright. And uh, I'll get you a little closer view here in a minute when I do the, uh, when I do the on and off with the switches. Uh, it does have a bottom in it, so this thing completely seals up. And, and apparently that's kind of where everybody's going with these cloth enclosures, and I think that's a good idea because it does do a lot better job of exhausting the smoke. One thing that this one did take into consideration that some of the other ones have it is there are holes on this side of the machine uh, that are probably half in diameter and there's, there's several of them along the length of the machine. But they've got this nice, this nice little flap here that kind of goes down over the top of the holes. But in the event that you, you, you don't allow this thing enough uh, air intake, the air pressure can actually you know open these or you can just leave these kind of pushed open a little bit and allow the airflow to come in and your airflow could come across the workspace and then be pulled out by the fan. 
So I do like the fact that they did include uh, air inlets in their design. Uh, a lot of other folks overlook that and you end up having to just kind of crack the door a little bit. And with that comes the risk of, you know, light exposure coming through that crack. But with these holes and the flap over it, that kind of mitigates the, the chance that the light could go out. It's below the workspace. Shouldn't be a lot of splashback coming out, but if it does, you have this flap that covers up the uh, air intake holes. So that's pretty neat. But all in all, guys, it's made of the same uh, flame resistant material as most of them are uh, on the inside. It does have a light colored finish, which helps with the lighting. It doesn't kill the lighting by being black on the inside. So that's another advantage to it. All right, guys, I've got the light burn open. Uh, you should be able to see the camera on the other side there and actually watch the machine. And if you look at the console here, uh, when I move over to my console feed, you can see everything that's going on. Now, I will tell you, in order to use this function of the machine, you will have to update your firmware. Uh, and with the Ortura machines, the way that you know what uh, firmware you're using is going to be when you first connect the machine. Let me, get, let me get back up here. When you first connect the machine and it runs all of the, you have to overlook some of that. I was trying to find the machine. When you first connect the machine and it's waiting for connection and then you see that first line of text, okay, it's going to confirm that it is connected. It's going to tell you what it is. It tells you its state, which is ready. This OLF 210, that is the latest firmware that I just downloaded it tonight and put it into this machine because it would not operate with the lights and the fan switch without having the most recent firmware. So if you're not running this OLF 10, then uh, 210, then you're gonna need to update that prior to being able to use this. Uh, once you do, guys, it's pretty simple. <clears throat> you can go in here and I'm gonna just type the commands first so you can see what happens. So I'm just gonna type in M13 and hit enter. That deactivates the light, okay? M12 turns the light back on. Now, to shortcut it and to make things simpler, Lightburn has given us, given us these little macro buttons. And you can right click on those and you can edit it. You can edit the label and then you can put what text you want to be in there. Uh, you can also do this for like rollers, uh, turning rollers on and off. Uh, you know, if you, if you want to put a setting in. There's a lot of other uses for this feature as well. And uh, we may cover that in another video. But today I just want to kind of let you know macros do exist. And that's the way that uh, we're going to be controlling these things is using the micro buttons. So I've got a fan uh, light on, light off, and you can put these in whatever order, whatever order you want to. And I've got a fan on and fan off. So when I hit this button, you're not going to be able to see it. You may be able to hear it. The fan goes off, okay? When I hit this button, the fan comes on. And same thing here. This turns the light off. This turns the light on. So, you know, I know you're thinking, well, what good is that? But guys, if you're in between, like if you're in between burns and you're sitting here listening to that fan run, uh, it's pretty simple to just go over here and you get your quiet back. And when you get ready to burn again, all you've got to do is remember to come over here and hit the button and turn the fan back on. So that's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. And like I said, with a little engineering, uh, you could probably take the output that powers those devices and, and, and engineer some relays to do lots of other stuff. But this is the way it's designed and this is the way we're gonna show it. Uh, but that's, uh, that's how it works, guys. Now for the next part, we're gonna test the, uh, how well this thing contains the smoke. All right, guys, so now for the, uh, the test to see how well it contains the smoke. And we've cheated a little bit because I have been using it. So I'm gonna try to act surprised uh, in the video, but I have been using it to, to make sure of how it works and checking the airflow and all that. So, so kind of cheated a little bit, but you guys don't know how well it's gonna do. So uh, we're gonna let you watch. And you should be able to see the smoke if there is any escaping. So Looks good. All right, here we go, guys. This is a solid burn. So pretty much the laser is gonna run continuously on this. This is not a, uh, this is not a, a, a image or anything. It's a solid burn. 
and you can see the smoke inside there. Uh, you should be able to. Let me let you down just a little bit. Hold tight. Let's see if I can kill the lights if it'll uh, make it show up a little better because it is bright in here. Okay, guys. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> that definitely changes the look of things. Uh, you can see the smoke inside. The smoke is accumulating, but it is not escaping. Uh, so that's a good thing. Wait a minute. Guys, it's starting to escape, but you know why? Somebody forgot to hit the fan on button. Okay, guys, lesson learned. The fan on button does not work during an engrave, so stand by. I'm gonna have to stop this. I'm gonna, all right, let me turn the fan on. It's getting smoky in there. All right, let's see how the fan does extracting all that smoke, guys. <laughs> Good news is, is it holds the smoke. Boy, does it hold the smoke. So one disadvantage to having a button to turn the fan on is, and when you have a really loud module in there that uh, sounds like a fan running, is that you could forget to turn your fan on. But the good news is uh, <laughs> the enclosure held it. That's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let this, the, the smoke kind of dissipate for a second and uh, we're gonna restart this burn. That was on me, guys. All right, so we got it. We got it aired out in there. Uh, but yeah, the, apparently the fan switch will not operate while the machine is streaming. So make a note, guys, to turn the fan on before you start your burn, uh, because that would be a little that would be a little uh, frustrating if you did. I wonder if the light will come on and off while it's burning. Let's let's test that. Okay, the light does not work either. So. During a burn, I'm, I'm assuming that's because the machine is streaming data from light burn as far as the burn goes, and it's, it's kind of like getting a busy signal. So just make sure that you turn your light on and your fan on prior to deploying the laser into the burn. Uh, but I'm going to let this, I'm gonna let this uh, record for a few minutes. I will be uh, kind of playing it in fast forward, but just to let you guys see how well it does with the smoke. You saw how smoky it was, and let's see, let's see if this little fan can keep up. All right, guys, so about 15 minutes worth of burning this solid, just black box that I'm making. And the enclosure is doing a really good job of keeping the smoke out. Uh, there's, since since uh, we cut the fan on, we haven't had any smoke escape. And it was ridiculous amounts of smoke in there earlier before it actually started escaping through the holes in the bottom. Uh, and alerted me to the fact that I forgot to turn the fan on. So I'm going to stop the laser and... Let you guys see how fast it dissipates from inside the enclosure. And I'm gonna go ahead and home it. Now, like I said, if you're inside your house, you always wanna kinda of give it a minute to uh, get some fresh air in the enclosure before you open it, because if you don't, uh, you're gonna wind up letting that uh, smoke out into your house. And that. So it looks like it got most of it cleared out that quick in the time it took me to home it. So I'm gonna go ahead and unzip this guy and see what it looks like on the inside when we open this door, see if we get a big whiff of smoke. 
yeah. minor minor smoke still in there but uh you know all i waited was the time that it took to home the machine so not bad not bad at all guys all right time out guys before i cut this video up i got to put this in here sunday nights seven o'clock central myself and steve from over at ventari's workshop we do our live we discuss stuff like this we help guys get the bugs worked out of their machines so if that's something you're into go ahead and put it on your calendar sunday nights 7 p.m central and come sit with us for a spell and talk about laser stuff so back to the programming all right guys on the behalf of gear junkies everywhere if nothing else, I think the light being able to cut on and off from light burn and the fan being able to cut on and off from light burn. I think it's cool, if, if nothing else. And Steve would, you know, Steve would agree that I'm a bit of a gear junkie. Uh, like I said, but I'm also seeing some, uh, some ways that I could use those macro switches to do other things. Uh, there's, you know, with a little bit of soldering and a little engineering, you know, th that output that's coming to power the fan and coming to power the lights you could repurpose that to other things so for you tinkerers out there that like to kind of you know put things together this might be something that you want to consider uh if i don't know if they sell the attachment as far as the lights and the fan individually but that might be something to look at guys uh it's pretty neat the way they've got this set up so all in all i'm going to say for a portable enclosure that's lightweight it does a good job of containing the smoke the sound actually as well as the laser light. I think it does a really good job. So if those are the things that you're looking for and you want something compact that you can, you know, pack away on the days that you're not using your laser, it's pretty easy to transport. Uh, with this machine, with this uh, enclosure having a bottom in it, you could actually leave the machine in the enclosure, pick it up and carry it around. So, you know, some of the other machines don't have a bottom. And so you would have to worry about dropping things out the bottom. With this one, it does have the bottom. The material is really thick. Uh, it seems like it would, it would, you know, not give you any problems being more of a portable setup that you could just carry everything without having to disassemble it. So if this is something you're interested in, guys, we'll put a link down below in the description. You can go check that out. But as far as portable enclosures and the add-ons for us, uh, Gear Junkies, I think Otura done a pretty good job with this one. Uh, the machine, I didn't realize that this Laser Master 3 had those capabilities, but now I do. So, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, hit the subscribe button. Got more content coming. I'm always trying out new machines. A uh, bit of a gear junkie, again. Uh, so, if, if, you know, lasers and laser add-ons and additions and accessories are things that you like, so do I. So there's probably gonna be a lot of videos. So go ahead and hit that button down there. Hit that subscribe and turn the notifications on so that you'll know when we get something new, cool, and uh, innovative here in the shack. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.